We begin this morning with the war in Ukraine and the capital, Kyiv, which is once again coming under attack. Two cruise missiles rocked the city last night. Local officials say one person was killed, 10 others were injured. The attack happened during a visit to the capital by U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres, and it prompted fierce condemnation in Ukraine. President Zelensky accused Russia of trying to humiliate the U.N. Meanwhile, the Biden administration is calling for more aid for Ukraine. The president is asking Congress to approve a $33 billion aid package. He called it a small price to pay for Ukraine's freedom. We're not attacking Russia. We're helping Ukraine defend itself against Russian aggression. And just as Putin chose to launch this brutal invasion, he could make the choice to end this brutal invasion. Russia is the aggressor. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Russia is the aggressor. And the world must and will hold Russia accountable. And as long as the assaults and atrocities continue, we're going to continue to supply military systems. NBC News global correspondent Raf Sanchez is in Lviv, Ukraine, and NBC News correspondent Josh Letterman is covering the latest developments out of the White House. Raf, let's start with you in that attack on Kyiv yesterday. Those two cruise missiles hit just as the U.N. Secretary General was visiting the Ukrainian capital. What more do we know about this attack? And also, what came out of that meeting between the U.N. chief and Zelensky? Joe, President Zelensky was very clear. He sees this as an attempt by the Kremlin to send a message to humiliate the Secretary General of the United Nations and basically say to the international community, stay out of this. Don't interfere in our invasion in Ukraine. Now, as you said, two residential buildings were hit, one person killed, 10 injured. And this strike coming just an hour or so after the Secretary General emerged from that meeting with President Zelensky at the presidential compounds. Earlier in the day, the Secretary General had been walking around the suburb of Borodyanka. That is one of those key suburbs that, along with Bucha, whose name will be etched in infamy as a place where Russian forces appear to have carried out mass war crimes. I want you to take a listen to just a little bit of what the Secretary General had to say about that. Ukraine is an epicenter of unbearable heart age and pain. I witnessed that very vividly today around Kyiv. The senseless loss of life, the massive destruction, the unacceptable violations of human rights and the laws of war. Let me be very clear. The Security Council failed to do everything in its power to prevent and end this war. And this is a source of great disappointment, frustration and anger. Now, Joe, these strikes a reminder that while the fighting on the ground is focused on the east, Vladimir Putin's missiles are able to hit every corner of this country, from Kyiv here in Lviv down to Odessa in the south, and they are striking everywhere they can. Joe? So, Josh, let's talk about the American response. Yesterday, President Biden asked Congress to greenlight this huge $33 billion aid package for Ukraine. What's included in that, and does it look like lawmakers will approve it? Yeah, that $33 billion package, Joe, is more than double President Biden's initial request to Congress for assistance for the Ukrainians, which was about $13.5 billion. Uh, so this means that the U.S. would now be spending uh, about as much per year trying to help the Ukrainians as we did in our own war in Afghanistan. And if you break down the numbers here, uh, it's about $20 billion, $20.5 billion, the largest uh, amount of this uh, package going to military and security assistance for the Ukrainians. But there's also about $8 billion in there for economic assistance to try to help prop up Ukraine's government as it is struggling to keep uh, basic functions going uh, with all of these hits on its infrastructure uh, and other challenge. There's also some humanitarian assistance included uh, in this package. And this would really allow the administration to not have to go back to Congress every single month for more money. They are looking at a five-month package, which essentially creates a bank account from which the Biden administration can draw down month after month as 
they need to provide bit by bit more security assistance to the Ukrainians. And you asked about the prospects in Congress. I think this aid package in and of itself for Ukraine will be pretty uh, applauded and have a lot of bipartisan support. But the real question, Joe, is whether lawmakers are going to try to either tie this in with COVID funding or if Republicans will seek a fight over the unrelated Title 42 issue. Uh, as you know well, sometimes things that seem like they should be straightforward aren't always so when they come to the U.S. Congress. Some of these issues that we don't think have anything to do with what we're talking about suddenly come into play. Raf, I want to ask you about one of the topics of discussion between the U.N. chief and President Zelensky, and that's the situation in Mariupol and that blockaded steel plant. So this morning, the presidential office said an operation to evacuate civilians from that facility is being planned for today. What more can you tell us about that? Yeah, Joe, a lot of confusion now about what is happening in Mariupol. Earlier this morning, President Zelensky's office putting out that statement saying they were hoping to carry out an evacuation today. There was nothing official from the U.N., but we know that a U.N. team did move down to Zaporizhia yesterday to be in place in case a window of opportunity did come up for that evacuation to go ahead. In the hours since, though, We've seen no movement. We've actually been speaking to a Marine who is inside that steel plant. He says that Russian shelling has been continuing all day. He says that there has been talk of evacuations every day for the last four days, but nothing has materialized. So a lot of rumors circulating in the tunnels underneath that steel plant, some glimmers of hope that people are daring to cling to. But right now, there is no sign of an evacuation going ahead. It is 2 p.m here in Ukraine. And of course, the Russians have a say in this. There is nothing official from the Russian government right now that suggests that an evacuation is planned, that they are planning to pull their forces back to allow that to go ahead. Zelensky's office referring only to an evacuation of civilians, so women and children, not clear what would happen to those hundreds of wounded Ukrainian soldiers who are down in the plants also. The commander of one of the Ukrainian Marine units says he has 600 men wounded. They will die down there if they don't get the medical attention they need. Jeff? The world watching what's happening there. Raf and Josh, thank you both. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.